All right, if you'll turn to uh, Luke chapter 15, and we're going to start in verse number 11. We're going to look at the uh, prodigal son and his brother, but we're going to talk about a little bit other, a little different than I've ever done before, but uh, something that uh, the Lord really spoke to me on as I was trying to prepare Monday and Tuesday and today, so... Uh, if you look at it, in verse 11, he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his, under him uh, his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance in riotous living. I'm going to stop right there because I started looking at what's righteous, li right, righteous living. You know, something that we, we've done this, I've, I've used this before, but I, so I looked it up in the dictionary. I'm not an English teacher. I don't know what things mean. I can't spell where to flip anyway. If my wife wasn't near me, she, we'd be in real trouble. That's why when I, she called that name out, there's no telling what it looks like. But God knows what it is, not me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and sometimes, if I hit a point on here, I wrote this. I may not be able to read my own writing. That happens, okay? So, sorry about that. But it's printed. But if you look at this, uh, riotous living, the first thing in the, in the uh, definition is undisciplined. Undisciplined. You know, I try to tell the young people when we're in class Sunday morning and all that, you know, they need to be very careful what they do because the devil doesn't care. He'll get you out there on your own. You know, I don't like being out late at night. Uh, I don't really care to go out front too, too much after dark uh, because there's so much meanness. You turn the news on, you hear this person got shot, that person got shot. The other day, they were talking about a young man who killed his grandmother. She's the only one who would take him in. She's the only one that took him in her house and let him live there, and he killed her. I mean, it's just there's so much meanness going on in the world today that it's something we need to understand. And so when we look at this, you know, people do all sorts of things. Uh, they showed a picture of a lady, a man getting shot trying to stop a, a robber. Lady got almost got shot trying to stop uh, road rage. You know, things like that. I, I, I drive, but sometimes I make mistakes. I always want to ask somebody when they say this one got mad and he was angry, he was hollering, screaming, do you ever make a mistake? You know, it, it, sometimes you put, and, oh my goodness, I didn't see that car. You know, I try to use all my mirrors like they taught me when I was in driving school. And uh, the coaches taught us how to drive and back behind the wheel. But I try to look at all of them. But every once in a while, there's a blind spot that you can't see. And, you know, it just amazed me that, you know, they must never make a mistake. They must think that way. I had a teacher at, at the first school I started teaching at, a uh, Christian school, and she told her kids that she said she's never made a mistake in her life. I told, I told my boss, I said, will you move me away from her class, please? I don't want to be near her, her, house, her, her, her room because God may strike it, and I don't want anywhere near it. <laughs> but, you know, people are doing that. I, I always try to tell people, you know, I, I make mistakes. A lot of times when we get to witness to people here at the, at the pantry, the first thing I always tell them is, you know, we all make mistakes. The Bible says all. I mean, that means all of us, including me, you know. Some people want to say, well, that includes you and then me. No, it includes me and then it includes you too. But it, they've got to understand that we all make mistakes. We all mess up. Uh, it's, it's just one of those things. And, and as we look at this, we're trying to figure out, you know, what's doing. Uh, another definition that was on there, uh, an, e an extravagant, dissolute. Dissolute means lax in morals, uh, lifestyle, such as drinking uncontrollably, spending wasting out and about when they shouldn't be. I mean, all this type of stuff, and, and we realize, I, I 
I tell the young people when we're on Sunday morning, when we're talking about, it, you know, you ought not to be going places you shouldn't go. You don't need to see those places. You don't need to go in those. I have people that I have taught over the last 30-something years, and I remember one of them told me, and, you know, she said, I just can't wait till I get out of school and I can go to the bar. I said, you really don't want to do that. Unfortunately, you look on Facebook and you see it. They're there. I, you know, and, and I try my best to, uh, to help them understand, but, you know, it's, it's we have to live the life right. Now, I have water. I try to get... It ain't supposed to be in that. You, have, you didn't turn the phone off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she always tells me, did you do it? And I did. But I didn't turn the right one off, I guess. Sorry about that. But, uh, but you know, yeah, I lost my train of thought. That just messed me up big time. I got water, yes. You know, I try to tell kids they need to drink water. But I always told them, I said, if I drank everything but water, you wouldn't listen to me. Jason can vouch for me. I drink water 99% of the time. When I coached them, when they were in school and I coached them, I always had water. I didn't like the, the drinks that were uh, supposed to be energy drinks and stuff like that. I didn't like them. And so I told them not to. But I never had one. Uh, I just, I, to me, I think if we do right, they can't say, well, you're doing it the wrong way. And that's why it needs to be important to us. When we live for Christ, we live for Christ. You know, that's the thing about it. I don't get out in the front yard and scream and holler and cuss and all that stuff. I just don't do it. There's some in our neighborhood that will do it. We have one that lives behind us. We now have a six-foot fence. At least that helps a little bit. But, they're over, but, you know, we need to learn not to do those things. Because if I'm going to try to witness to somebody... They must see the right kind of life in me before we start. And when we look at this, with righteous living, this guy, he just lives what he wants to. He goes to the bars. He goes to the uh, places of wrong, everything like that. He does it. You know, it's important that we realize that what we put in our grocery uh, bag ought to be right. Every once in a while I see somebody that I know and they profess to be a Christian and there's some things in there that shouldn't be in there. I don't say anything because that's not my place. That's God's place. But I think to myself, you know, but if that was me, then I put that in there and somebody saw it. And I preached against it in school, in church, in Sunday school. I'm not helping matters. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. So it should be important to us that we live that life. The guy lived two Two houses down for us has a one bad arm, and uh, he he came down to me one one day. He said, I, d "Do you want to cross in your front yard?" He said, "I know you you you're a religious man." I'm thinking, okay, now where did this come from? But it's because I don't stand out and scream and holler. We don't do things that other people do. I have a man that lives next door to me right now that I talk to him. I don't use the language he does. They have parties at the, his house, and they drink and all that. But I told Deb one day we were talking about it. I said, I've been, I've been talking with him now for the last 10 or 12, 14 years, so I don't know how long he's lived there. But, you know, we just do what's right. There may become a time in our life when he comes and says, I need to ask a question, and I need to be faithful to what I'm doing. We need to be faithful. That's what's important. This son who went out because he told his dad, give me everything that belongs to me, and I'm out of here. I didn't. Young people, don't tell your mom and dad give you everything that belongs to you and you, you're leaving. It ain't belong to you anyway. It belongs to them. You know, I, it just happens. But I've seen kids, I've seen grown-ups do that. Say, well, mom, I want, to, I want this and this and this and this. I'm sorry. It's theirs. It's not mine. Now, when they go home to be with the Lord, and then we have to 
move it, take it to wherever, then we'll do that for them. But it's not mine. And we need to realize they need to see Christ in their everyday life. That's what should be important. I teach school, and I, I see kids all the time. And I need to show forth Christ as we go. They don't need to see the other stuff. I mean, I mess up. I'm sorry. I wish I never made a mistake in my life. But I told kids a long time ago, when God came into my heart and saved me, I wish God would have made me perfect and I would have never made a mistake. But unfortunately, I didn't. And I have to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I shouldn't have done that. But as we go, we, we, we see what's going on. So our morals need to be where they should be. We also no, no, notice something else. Uh, another part of the definition says disorganized, rowdy, turbulent, and unruly. Boy, there's a lot of that going on. I mean, that's why I don't go too many places late. I'm too old to go any places as hot as it is now. Don't want to. But, you know, there's things like that. Uh, they, had, they were on, on the TV. They had a, a party, and some guy got out there and started shooting and shot one or two or three. I thought to myself, you know, that's sad. But that's a society we're living in. They said, well, we need to get rid of guns. No. We need to first <coughs> get the heart right of every kid, every person that's in this, in this country. That will make a difference. My guns never shot anybody. I have three of them in my house, and they've never shot anybody. Most of the time, they don't have, they don't have a bullet in them, so it's <laughs> kind of hard for them to do anything. But, you know, the thing about it, as we go... <coughs> Another definition on there was fond of fighting, uh, aggressive, lawless, and violent. There's a lot of violence going on. I mean, you know, we had a lot of churches that have had been shot up. I remember when I was a kid, I know that's a long time ago for some of y'all, but I mean when I was a kid, they wouldn't, nobody would rob a church. They wouldn't dare go inside a church. They were afraid God was going to strike them dead, and they would not do it. Nowadays, it doesn't bother people anymore. Not a bit. You know, we need to realize that this stuff that the prodigal son did, said, Dad, I want all, all that belongs to me. Let me go. You know, when I graduated high school, I stayed at home. I told kids all along, my mama cooked good. I didn't know how to cook back then. Now, I can cook now, but... Back then, I didn't know how to cook. And mom always had supper on the table when I got home from work. I had to do chores. Hey, you know what? I still got to do chores. <laughs> but unfortunately, there's nobody there but me and Deb. And uh, when we remember, we do it. <laughs> but, you know, I just, but the thing about it is we need to realize that this is what's important to us, is to do what God would have us to do. So Christ can see and understand our life and our, our life for it. You know, we ought not to miss church anymore than we have to. Now, if you you got something you got to do, that's right. You got to work. You got to work. I understand that. But my dad, and some of these can vouch for it, I think in all the... 50 years that we, that he was pastoring, I think he missed one Sunday. And then he missed two others because his back was out and he couldn't hardly move. But he had to go to my grandpa's funeral in Louisiana. He just didn't believe in missing. It was very important to be in church. It ought to be important for us to be at church. You know, if we take a vacation, that's fine. Daddy used to take... So if you take two weeks, take the middle Sunday. Stay here for the first one and stay here and come home for the, the last one. But I remember it was just things like that that he taught me growing up. And so when you hear something like that, somebody saying, Miss Well, he done lost his ever loving mind. And it, you can say, that's okay. But I really feel like the other day when we had Father's Day, I thought of some things that Dad did for us. And I thought to myself, thank you, Lord, for 
for having a father who cared for me enough that he took care of us and he preached the word and he told us the, the things we're supposed to do. That's what's important to us. And when you mess up, ask forgiveness and get back on the right track. You know, you ever fallen off a bicycle? Did you kick the bicycle down and tell you, I'm never going to get on it again? No. You back, get back on it again. I used to skate. Ain't happening no more. <laughs> it's not, no, but I, I would skate, fall, straight, skate, fall. I mean, it doesn't matter. I used to play football on Sunday afternoons after church, before Sunday night church, out here where Starling uh, Ballpark was, ball field was, and we'd go out there and play. I've hit my head a few times. That's probably what's wrong with me, okay? I can't help that part. Uh, but the thing that we need to realize is just do what God would have us to do. That's what should be important to us. Another thing it says, um, when, we, when we think of somebody talking about we're scorn, scorning other people, that's the belief that somebody or some person is worthless. You know what? People are not worthless. God loves us all. God's given us things. They may not have as much as you do. I may not have as much as they do. I got a, I, I, I text a young lady. You'll know who she, I think you will. Uh, Parissa, can't remember her name. They used to live down here in, the, in Highlands, going down there where that big house was, down there. Uh, I taught her older brother, and she was a twin to her brother, and I taught them in high school at, at uh, San Jacinto. And uh, I talked to them the other day, and I asked her what she was doing. They're in Australia. I mean, they're not in the United States. They're in Australia. And uh, she's a she asked me some things I'm doing. And I told her brother one day, he, he texted me. He said, what you doing? I said, I'm teaching school, and I'm living for the Lord. That's important. Young man, uh, he's worth a lot of money. In fact, when he, when he graduated high school, he graduated college, and he started a job, and I think he tripled his worth. The last thing I heard, I think he's worth about $10 million. A little bit of guy. He's really, but you know what? They, God loves us all, no matter if we're worth a million dollars or we're worth nothing. God still loves us. God still takes care of us. God wants us to do, him, do for him. And when we look at this, the son here that, would, you know, he did whatever he wanted to. And we'll read a little bit more, and I'm, that clock's running faster than me. Sorry. Uh, he said in verse 14, it said, When they had spent all that there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen that that country, and he sent him into the fields to fill the swine, feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swines did eat. And if you ever, you've never fed pigs, you don't understand. That slop stinks. I remember my grandparents in Louisiana used to have them, and I mean, they would have bucket out on the back porch. They'd dump everything into it, and then the, the next morning, they'd take it out to the pigs and dump it all in there. It had some strong smells to it. And, you know, but the thing about it is, he, he said, you know, he, he did eat, but he thought to himself, you know what? In the next verse, he said, and when I came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? He says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, I've sinned against heaven and against thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He said, Dad, just, just let me work for you. I don't have to go in. I don't have to be in the house. I don't have to have anything from you. I've already taken everything I shouldn't have in the first place. But just let me work for you. Just like God teaches us. And he said, But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, 
put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. This my son was dead and alive. Understand, he said, this is what's important to us. You know what? That's what we ought to treat people. When people come to our church that uh, maybe done us wrong, we need to be careful what we say, how we say it. We need to, we need to enjoy being around here. I've been around this church a long time. I spent about, I think, I think 13 years away from here uh, right before Daddy passed away in Houston leading music up there. But the rest of the time I've been here, and I, I realize, you know, a lot of people come in. I see them, I say, okay, I know that person. I may not remember their name. Unfortunately, I don't remember names very well. But, uh, you know, people have come. And I remember the man and wife who bought the organ and the piano for the church hundreds of years ago. Not really, but you know what I mean. Uh, when Brother J.C. Harrison came to Dad one morning, he was up in years, and he goes, Brother Ed, I want you to lead me to the Lord just like you do to anybody else. And he sat down at the desk, and Dad went to the plan of salvation. Brother J.C. Harrison looked at Dad and said, I've done it. I'm okay. When God calls me home, I'm okay. I know where I'm at. That's the thing about it. Folks, we need to do what God would have us to do. That's what should be important. I'm looking forward to vacation Bible school. Uh, I remember when we used to have 300 kids <laughs> all over the place. I remember the the uh, the rocket that Brother Earl fixed it so when it when something popped, it blew all apart, and the, the clowns inside that came running out. I remember that. Kids never forgot that stuff. I remember some things that they've done. You know, that's the thing. We ought to get ready and have a good time. And do what God would have us to do. Let's bow our heads. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.